What's going on YouTube? It's Tower the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to talk about the differences between mounting a TV antenna outside the traditional way and mounting it inside your attic. I've had a lot of people approach me about this subject. Some were worried about severe weather possibly taking out the antenna. Others have a high roof peak and are worried about falling off the roof when installing the antenna. And then I have a lot of people that say they don't want an antenna on the roof for aesthetic purposes. There I say the wife that goes, I don't want that antenna on my roof. You're not putting it up there. Hence people are looking for an alternative way to mount the TV antenna. So the first thing I want to mention is that optimal TV reception using the antenna is achieved outside and mounting a TV antenna in your attic can possibly weaken the signals by up to 30%. So if you have strong signals in your area, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference. But if you have weak signals, it's possible you may lose some stations by mounting the TV antenna in your attic or you may experience more dropouts during severe weather. However, despite the small signal loss, installing a decent outdoor antenna in your attic is 10 times better than using this thing in your living room. In fact, I set up an antenna in a guy's attic who was using this little flat antenna, and he only got about 20 stations with the flat antenna. They'd constantly be going in and out every time a car went by. When I installed the antenna in his attic, he went from 20 stations to 60 stations. So that shows you the difference between some junky little antenna like this and a decent outdoor antenna, even if it's in your attic. So you have a few options in terms of mounting a TV antenna in your attic. You can use the J-pole like what you see in this picture. You can use a rope and kind of tie it to the top. Or you could stop by your local home improvement store and pick up one of those 10-foot pipes and have them cut it to maybe two or three feet below the height of the ceiling in your attic and then mount the antenna on that. Another question I receive about installing an antenna in the attic is does the antenna have to be properly grounded? And the answer is yes, because an ungrounded antenna can build up static and attract lightning. Although the chances are very, very slim of a lightning strike, you still want to protect yourself and your equipment from possibly being damaged in the event of a lightning strike. Now don't let the thought of lightning striking an antenna deter you from installing the antenna outdoors or even in the attic. The chances of a lightning strike are very slim and there are tons of other things that the lightning would probably rather hit, but just in the rare instance that it wants to hit an antenna, you do want to protect yourself by grounding the antenna. I will be creating a video in the coming weeks on how to properly ground an antenna, both the coaxial cable and the mast, but if you want to do it in the meantime, I included a link in the description on how to do it, along with a link to some parts you may need on Amazon. I recommend installing a preamplifier up at the antenna so you don't lose some of the weaker stations in the long coaxial cable run. And if you're splitting the multiple TV sets, I also recommend a distribution amplifier. Don't use those unpowered splitters because you lose some of the signal each time you split it and they're not plugged into the wall. I have the links in the description of this video as well. If you're on Facebook, follow my page at facebook.com slash antennamanpa. I'm going to start posting updates on all of the antenna installations that I'm doing in the Pennsylvania area. So if you're curious to see how many channels some people are getting around you, feel free to like the page, subscribe to my channel for more cord cutting updates, and have an awesome day.